When it comes to drug use, addiction does not discriminate, but the factors leading to it can. And new research shows deadly drug overdoses are rising fastest among black Americans, and the pandemic made it worse. To find out the impact in our own community, we followed two leaders in our area on the front lines of fighting fentanyl. The leading scientists in the world on this issue have tied a direct line from systemic racism to fentanyl in the black community. God, our communities have been destroyed and harmed by dangerous drugs. Outside St. Pete's Woodson African American Museum. Opioid and fentanyl have worked their ways into our communities. An unlikely scene. Lift up the head and the spirit of those who are fighting addiction. Prayers to fight fentanyl. I think it's very easy, to be honest with you, to focus on communion, weddings, funerals, a Sunday school, and not deal with the tragedy of homeless being broken because of drugs. The Reverend J.C. Pritchett works with community groups on solutions. He says drugs have been a taboo topic in the church for way too long. And it's going to take more than prayers to solve this crisis. We can't pretend that it doesn't exist because it does. And it's impacting black Floridians in numbers growing faster than any other group. According to Live Tampa Bay, the opioid overdose death rate for black Floridians increased 330% from 2014 to 2018. How this uh, crisis affects our community is, is different than another community. And so several things happened with the global pandemic. We weren't gathering on a regular basis as we do in our, our tradition at worship on Sundays. That's a support system several times a week that literally was removed from our community. When you are hurt, you're looking for an answer. You're looking for a salve, a solution to feel better. And, and, and again, a black uh, answer for a black problem, that since 1619, the black body has been uh, attacked, it's been, um, discriminated against, it's had to deal with different uh, aspects of being a person of color in this country. I started out first drinking and then uh, marijuana and then by 11 I, I was sniffing heroin. Fentanyl isn't the first opioid crisis to hit the black community. My attention was more or less, more or less uh, for a false sense of enjoyment, a false sense of fulfillment, to kind of like be able to deal with my, my feelings of worthlessness. Uh, inside. USF researcher Dr. Micah Johnson studies drug misuse. He says the heroin epidemic of the 70s and 80s should be a lesson for today. The face of the opioid crisis at that time was poor black people. Therefore, it was met with a lot of insensitivity, no resources, no humanization, and locking people up and treating them like animals. A disparity Johnson hopes to better address this time around. Well, we're heading down to one of the best facilities in our college. Over 2,000 square feet research laboratory, the largest cluster of African American researchers in the country probably. Gifted through a $1.5 million grant from NIH. In this new space. How do the drugs get into these communities? USF researchers will study the impact fentanyl and other drug use is having on minority communities. We don't quite understand the impact it's having because we haven't been able to do the research fast enough to keep up with the epidemic. Neither has the state. The Florida Department of Health tracks a lot of drug data, but we couldn't find any racial breakdowns for fentanyl. We've been worried about disparities. State Senator Daryl Rusan once had his own battle with drugs. And he's behind a new law that requires each county to create health equity plans. The first thing we need to do is track the data. He says tracking fentanyl in black communities should be a priority. Nothing is more urgent than losing lives to fentanyl and to other types of drug overdoses. Throughout the history of time, drugs have been considered medicines, right? So why are people overindulging in certain substances and certain medicines? One paradigm is it. It's, it's to cope. Dr. Johnson says fentanyl is especially harmful in low-income black communities that formed as the result of racial segregation. He says the street supply is getting more dangerous. The fentanyl is so powerful that it's used to, to, to cut and mix with other drugs to maintain a certain potency. Johnson says the drugs are some people's way of dealing with life's pressures when they don't have the tools or resources to cope. Folks who are hopeless are four to eight times more likely 
to misuse opioids. I've heard folks mention the, the widespread availability of drugs with the lack of healthcare services, not just therapy, but any sort of healthcare services in their communities, and that's a huge problem. Systemic racism is a critical issue, a critical barrier by which people feel stress, and also that blocks people from access. So to find a solution. We have to address the social stressors that are causing people to need to cope. That thing called hope. You, the creator of everything. Is so important. Offer hope. For those who feel hopeless, they, they turn to these drugs. To, to escape that hopelessness. The people you saw in this piece, they're working to make sure that people can have that hope and that research center at USF. Dr. Johnson says it is one of, if not the largest in the nation, studying addiction when it comes to drug use in communities of color.